Tonight, part two of our special report on the demolition of several historic properties in Peru tied to a circus legend raised and buried out in 21 country. As Indot is just weeks or even days away from tearing down the Terrell Jacobs Circus Winter Quarters, we hear from the Miami County historian who tried desperately for years to save them. Brian McElhatton shows us. This is one amazing piece of history that will never be seen again, folks. We're getting a rare glimpse inside the old, tired barns once owned by one of the greatest circus performers in history. In Terrell's day, he was like a movie star. He was at the top of his game, and everyone in the country knew who he was. Noise, trash, and gravity are ravaging these historic grounds, and soon, Construction workers will demolish the buildings, leaving nothing but memories for those who care to remember. It's sad. His legacy here, I think, will be forgotten in time. Miami County historian Craig Atkins is one of those people. He remembers driving past these buildings as a kid when they were owned by another circus family, Paul and Dorothy Kelly. He still brings a smile to my face every time because we are all, all of us boys were, you know, nose against the windows looking for, for animals. Terrell Jacobs built these barns for his exotic animals, and the Kellys kept it that way for some time. For years, Adkins tried to raise money, even organize a nonprofit to save them. Offers were made, but a deal was never done. Dorothy always wanted the property preserved, but then it was home to her, and it was her whole world, and she couldn't let go of her whole world, I don't think, at any price. In the circus world, the Kellys were revered. At one point, they were just as famous as Terrell Jacobs. But that fact complicated the negotiations. And the focus was on Terrell Jacobs, but he only owned the property for five years. Her family owned it since 1955. And she said it should be our farm. It should be the Kelly winter quarters on the side of the building, not Terrell Jacobs' name. And I, I tried to convince her that it doesn't matter whose name's on it as long as they're preserved, right? Dorothy Kelly died in 2012 at the age of 100. And by then, these barns began to fall apart. They sat on the market until INDOT bought the land in 2018 for $150,000. There was no way to preserve those buildings. INDOT spokesman Hunter Petroviak says they wanted to remove the driveway access from US 31, but ultimately decided to tear down the buildings, which he says pose a danger to the curious. You know, nobody likes to tear down historic buildings, but when you look at the pictures, um, those buildings are in such disrepair that nobody really needs to be stepping foot in them. So we're removing them um, as part of, you know, a public safety effort uh, to make sure that nobody goes onto that property and winds up in one of those buildings. Atkins' only hope now is that INDOT will work with the Circus Hall of Fame to save what they can. 10 years, 20 years from now, people will drive down US 31 and will see nothing but brush and bushes and trees and it will be forgotten. His career was amazing and, you know, his accomplishments were amazing. And, you know, it all happened in a small little town in Indiana. The process to purchase and demolish the property has taken several years. We're told the latest delay to tear the buildings down is because of asbestos. INDOT says crews are still on track to have the project completed by the end of June. In the purchase agreement, INDOT helped pay for the International Circus Hall of Fame's new roof and worked with members to salvage what they could from the barns for preservation.